And hello and welcome back to the Talking Salford podcast, where we bring back some of the most celebrated and interesting alumni back to campus to talk about their memories of their time here and find out about what they've gone on to achieve in their careers. My name is Lachlan Campbell and I'm today's host for this episode, which is being recorded here on the Peel Park campus in the New Adelphi building. If you want to watch along, you can see our beautiful faces by heading to the University of Salford's YouTube channel. Now it's time to kick things off by welcoming today's guests, and I am delighted to welcome Molly Bullshaw and Rebecca Beasley. Hello. Hi. How, how are we today? We're good. Brilliant. Delighted to be here. Thank mm. you so much for being with us today. Um, Molly and Rebecca graduated from Salford in 2019 from the BA Fine Art Program and founded Short Supply. This was to provide opportunities for art graduates to showcase their work and act as a bridge between university and the established art world. This artist-led organisation runs exhibitions, talks and workshops to help emerging artists in the Northwest get the recognition they deserve. Their most celebrated project is the Graduate Art Prize Made It, which is an open call exhibition inviting students from across the Northwest to showcase their work and have it shown in an exhibition space. Its 2022 edition was funded by Arts Council England and led to a billboard takeover across Manchester with artist work shown in Home Manchester and Rogue Artist Studios. 300 plus applications were received at last year's event, with 25 shortlisted artists getting their work on display last September and October. Since forming, the duo have collaborated with organisations such as the Manchester Art Gallery, the Institute of International Visual Arts, the Whitworth and Culture Warrington. A big mouthful at the end there. So (laughs) to start with both, Welcome back to campus, and I want to take things back to the very start of your journey. Can you tell me about how the two of you met and start to reflect on your Salford journey? Oh, so we met in September of 2016, Mm. uh, first day of the course. Uh, It was in the Peel building, beautiful building, absolutely stunning. Um, Yeah, we had our first lecture in there. I was late because I got lost uh, and I had to walk from, we lived in Bramall, didn't Mm. we? Bramall Court. Yeah. Um, But I didn't realise Molly also lived there. Um, So yeah, I walked over on my own, got lost, saw Molly through the door and went, I'm going to sit next to them. And then just, you know. That's where it's Big energy. It's a proper meet cute. Yeah. It was just, (laughs) hi, can I sit here? Sure. (laughs) And that was it. Mm. Yeah, I seem to remember our first conversation, they were banging on about some kind of trip we were going to be doing to Blackpool throughout the year. In November. In November. What a, what a time goes, to go Blackpool. <laughs> yeah, and Beck goes, that's around my birthday. And I seem to remember that I went, I didn't, I didn't ask. ask. <laughs> and I was like, oh, please keep being mean to me. I love this. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> Why fine art? What was it about the programme that interested the both of you? For me, it wasn't initially called fine art. It was called visual art. Yeah. Uh, I came from doing a foundation in art and design in Cornwall. Um, as you can tell, I'm not from there. Um, I just lived there for a bit. Um, so yeah, I did. I did a foundation year, and I really enjoyed doing textiles. That's kind of my background. I, I wanted to continue working with fabrics and kind of pushing the the textile within kind of contemporary art rather than the whole mm. fashion side of it. Um, so I chose visual arts because I thought, to me, fine art was very old masters, oil paintings, marble sculptures of women with boobs out, and I just wasn't... I don't know how big Beck thought Salford's budget was going to be. Yeah, no, I didn't know how big it was either, but I thought <laughs> visual art, that, that leaves... That's an open pool that I can just swim in. and Bring and... in the lumps of marble. Yep. <laughs> bring them on in. I'll bring them with me from Barbara Hepworth Studio in St. Ives. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a similar story for me, I guess. I did a foundation in Blackburn, where I'm from. Um, and prior to that, I'd actually been doing a lot of stuff with film rather than kind of uh, visual arts, like painting and stuff. Okay. Um, and yeah, I guess uh, when I went to kind of have an open day and and met the tutors and met everyone on fine art then it was called visual arts they all seemed really chill about us exploring and and testing stuff and 
Um, and it felt different to other courses that seemed to be, ah, you're good at painting, well, you better do that. Um, and it felt more like, ah, I kind of want to try other stuff and do more weird things. And I'm really, I was really new to it at the time. And it felt exciting to have the opportunity to mm-hmm. um, experiment and do things that maybe didn't feel, I don't know, within a certain trajectory. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we weren't kind of pigeonholed from from the get-go. It was like, you're an artist, that's great. How do you want to develop rather than, you're a painter, well, here's all the studios where all the painters are. Mm -hmm. You can be around like-minded people, whereas we Mm. wanted that flexibility, that openness, I guess. And you guys joined just as this building that we're recording in today was officially unveiled. So what was that like to be in the brand new space and have it really to yourselves? (laughs) <laughs> well I think it took about 12 months for everything to kind of settle in a little bit yeah. um, as new buildings are um, but yeah it was good I mean we saw the old space that the visual arts course was run from yeah we had a tour around that I remember Brendan being like this is the space that we're in now but it doesn't matter because here's a catalogue with what you're moving into and I'm like great <laughs> but I love the yeah. look of this place it was crusty it was a bit damp it was a proper what you would expect an artist studios to look like yeah it had kind of a grassroots charm Mm -hmm. um but i think a lot of the draw for for picking the course at salford was all of the resources and um and the equipment available and yeah the workshops are like world class i mean the stuff we got to learn was amazing not that we did a great deal of learning in that first year (laughs) no once once you're told what percentage you need it's basically just into the wind you know um, we weren't the best. Love, first. love the honesty. Yeah, we weren't the best first year students. <laughs> However, we 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 did uh, pull our fingers out for you know the the other two years that we I were see. here. I think there's a powerful story in there. Of I mean, we weren't the best students, full stop. But I think you don't have to be the best student to, you know, kind of find your your rhythm and mm-hmm. your your niche and to have a career. I think there's some there's something in that that I enjoy and maybe. <laughs> Maybe this isn't the platform for that, but who knows? I think when you're at university, though, you're at the age where you're kind of coming to terms with who you are as well. Like Mm. you're 18 at the youngest, kind of finding your feet, that freedom for the first time. You're exploring who Mm. you are as well as obviously doing your course. And I think it's important to remember that. So, yeah, we weren't great students, but we're, we're still here now. I mean, I think the results after graduation kind of speak for themselves about the people that you guys are and the passion that you have for what you do. You got to do a fair amount of travelling on the course, didn't you, though? Yes. Yeah. Can you tell me about places you went to? (laughs) Uh, In first year, it was in February, we went to Berlin. Hmm. Um, We've got some weird stories from Berlin, but we won't get into that. (laughs) Um, Then we went to Venice for the Venice Biennale. So that Hmm. happens every two years. Hmm. And then for our third year, we went to Florence um, since graduating, we've been back to Venice uh, for each year of the Biennale. So mm. we went last year, it was our fourth trip to Venice. Was it? I think so. Was yeah. it our third? No, fourth. I'm sure I it was can't our actually even remember. But we keep going back because that first time was, I mean, it's, uh, it's a really special event and it's different every time. Mm. So it continues to have that draw. And I think for us as well, it kind of acts as a, right, here's what is like cool at the moment. Here's it's like what, research and development. Yeah, here's yeah. what artists are doing around the world. You know, and mm-hmm. it's all here in one, in one place. It's amazing. And the food's delicious. Oh, got to, you've got to love never Italian been. food. Don't get back talking about pasta. <laughs> <laughs> mm, I love pasta. I like pasta, and I've never been to Italy. It's definitely on my bucket list to go. Oh, what a, to go back and to Venice, and to even go to Venice as a student, I think is mm. is a very nice thing. Yeah, to it's be pretty able great. To have. We yeah. went in November. We were actually there for my twenty first, which Lovely. was wild. Mm. Um, and then yeah, so. Since then, we've been, yeah, it is four times because we went November, then we went in October, then we went in September, and now we've just been in August. We seem to keep going a month further. August, sweltering, would not recommend, but would at the same it's time. good to know, yeah. September's a good time. Good good amount of heat then, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> let, let's move on, as we alluded to, to post-graduation, to short supply. So... Um, I think the name kind of alludes to this, but what's it all about? Yeah, so Short Supply, we started it when we were kind of just before, a few months before we graduated, um, kind of because we recognised that we wanted to work together. We wanted to do things once we left. We wanted to keep a a momentum going, but we were finding it difficult as individual artists to kind of get recognition um, and to be trusted with projects. 
to be trusted to host things because we didn't have a reputation we you know we didn't really have a lot of experience we had done some things kind of around the city and we'd kind of curated a couple of exhibitions before but you know there was we needed that um oomph so to speak and we thought well you know we want to work with other people we want to meet more artists around the northwest the best way for us to do that is probably to make it a thing establish a thing and then we kind of have a name that we can approach people with and and it feels more professional it feels more I don't know, it kind of comes across as more credible. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, so, you know, I can't remember the conversation, how we ended up picking the name Short Supply. Was that what this question was about? Yeah. I th- yeah? I can remember it. Can you remember it? Yeah, so Short Supply came from that kind of, that you know, that need to kind of create a reputation. But mm-hmm. we realised that opportunities for individual artists were in Short Supply. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And when we initially started, we kind of created a logo for ourselves and it was a red brick which is the Salford red brick and yeah. the same kind of bricks that were made, that the Peel building was made, which is where we met. Yeah. But we kind of really brought it back to our grassroots. Um, it's a very sweet and wholesome story. I don't remember where the, where the conversation was. Do you remember where the conversation was that we had this? Was it in the car? Probably. We, Probably. Have, we have a lot of in-depth conversations while I'm driving down the motorway. I'm relieved that Beck remembers this stuff. Yeah. If you're asking me, it'll be, well, you know... <laughs> Yeah, so that's that's kind of where short supply came from. Mm. Was it born out of frustration with the art sector as well? Oh, Usually, God, everything is. I think everything. Sorry, <laughs> just launched straight Go in. On. No, but everything is born of frustration. I think everything in the creative industries. I think the only two things that can drive a person in this industry is just a passion for it and wanting to kind of seek that joy and that anger. That it is hard, and I think that a lot of the what we've experienced since leaving is that you know a lot of the routes that you have to take are so undetermined you have to take a lot of risks and that's scary and it feels frustrating to not be you know kind of guided through it in a way that is challenging but then also safe and I think that's going to make you frustrated yeah I mean my mum used to say to me about going to university she was like going to university gives you the key to unlock the door to the rest of your career but it that's not necessarily the case i mean for her it was because she went into nursing so it it literally did but not for every course i mean for fine art it gave us a key and an outline of a door and we had to work out how to turn that outline into a real door i see sort of thing it's that kind of creativity it's it's more difficult it's not just great i have a piece of paper and i've shook the hand of someone clammy and i've walked across a stage and now what you know it's that you know you actually have to think about it maybe adapt it's that adaption that is that a word i feel like that isn't a word that's not a word but that's all right we're creatives we can make things up yeah there we go i think i think it's a really interesting concept here the idea that as as a fine art graduate um you graduate and as you say it's about that there is no obvious route to go into because there are so many different routes or things you can do with that kind of degree but it's not immediately obvious about where you start how do you begin that process and is that something which is very important to you guys with short supply in terms of helping other graduates find the next step once they leave yeah and i think we kind of try and platform that transparency as well about you know when you graduate it's okay to still be in these dead-end jobs that you hate being in i mean it was only until maybe about two years ago that we actually left retail i worked while i was at uni as well i worked weekend jobs while i was at uni i worked at tesco um and yeah then we worked at dunelm whilst trying to you know work through short supply before it became freelance so Mm. we were a good three four years out of university past you know Mm postgraduate before we actually managed to leave retail or hospitality or whatever job that you're actually in and i think it's that transparency of you have the job that you want that you're reaching for that your goal is and you have the survival job that pays the bills and that's okay it's yeah. finding it's finding the time in in between to, for yourself and for your practice and you know for various other things but i think it's you know we we try and platform that transparency i mean at the same time the values of short supply is in kind of recognition of that these things should change that there should be more viable routes and and better kind of um structure around employability and that's kind of a lot of the work that we do is um working towards sort of changing that i mean 
you know, it, we found it so difficult as individual artists because it is hard and we chose to work in a different way. I guess at the time we didn't realise it, but we were, what we were trying to do with the Graduate Art Prize was to work horizontally in a sense, kind of, let's find other graduates who are like us and let's work with them instead of kind of reaching up and trying to work with the galleries that don't want, don't, don't want to know anything about what we're doing. Um, and that works because, you know, you as a team, as a collaborative effort, can achieve more um, when you pool all of that experience together that you don't have. Like, I don't know a lot of the things that Beck knows and there's a lot of things that I know that she doesn't know. And because we work together and we work with hundreds of other artists on that same principle, the things that you can achieve are amazing by kind of working in that way. Um, so that's kind of the ethos of what we do and, mm. and that I mean, kind of helps those roots. You've mentioned a lot about Made It there and that's been a big success for you guys over the years. And it continues to get a lot of interest in applications. Did you ever really envisage that when you started coming up with the concept of it and thinking about further down now? Because are we in, coming into the fourth year, the fifth year of this now? Fifth year of fifth it now, year, yeah. Fifth year, yeah. So did you envisage you'd be in your fifth year when you started it? Mm. Um, I seem to remember that, I guess, <laughs> I, I, do, I don't know if you remember this, but I do remember us having a conversation being like, what if we did this for like five years? And talking about <laughs> five years like it was 50 years. Um, but I guess I didn't really think about the fact that when we actually got there, one, how quickly it would happen, um, and two, how it would almost hardly feel like any time at all. And I guess in my head at the time, I seem to remember thinking, five years? Yeah, we'll do it for five years and then that'll probably be enough. But actually, it feels the opposite. It feels like, oh, you know, there's there's something that we've started here that has only really scratched the surface in this amount of time. And yeah, it, it's uh, it's continuing to kind of, we're, we're building on it. And I think it, it comes from a place of strength now where when we kind of started it, it was just a, let's try it. Let's see, you know. At its very basis, what is made it then? It's a graduate <laughs> showcase um, for, you know, students and graduates from across the Northwest. Um, we usually say it is from the graduating year that it's on and also the year before. So we just, you know, we open it up. Um, it's for any level, um, BA, Masters, mm. usually they're the ones that we get. Mm. Um, it's for any medium um, kind of within the contemporary arts. So it could be performance, it could be even music, it could be dance, it could be um, video, mm -hmm. film, uh, it could be live performance, it, you know, the the mind boggles, it, you know, we, we try and keep it open because we want it to be a showcase of graduate excellence, we yeah. want it to be an exhibition that people come to and not realise that they're students or that they have recently graduated, mm -hmm. we want to be able to platform in a professional way to prove to galleries and and, and, you know, various institutions that just because they're straight out of university doesn't mean that they don't have that professionalism and that that standard, that level that they are expecting from someone in their mid-career. Um, hmm. Yeah, but, we're, you know, we're quite open with the graduates as well throughout the process. We want to teach them as much as we can as as they go through it. And I guess it's that we want made it to be that first thing on their CV since graduation yeah. to prove that they have been in a, you know, in a show, in a gallery space in Manchester so that when they go to apply for something else that, you know, people can go, oh, well, they've been in that and that's great. Yeah. You know, we, we had someone who we say is in our Made It alumni um, from 2019, the first year that we did it. And they went on to get a residency in, was it America or something? I don't know who you're talking about, so I don't know. Uh, it was Ellie from Man Met. Uh, oh, um, Tufty and Ellie. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah. went on to they went on to get a, a residency after the show. Yeah. Um, because they had made it on their on, on their, their CV, CV, which was great. Yeah, I mean, I won't I won't list them all off because <laughs> I imagine you don't need the whole list. But you know, th I think. Um, it's a springboard opportunity and you know we have loads of stories like that which is a really lovely thing to have of artists who have gone on to exhibit internationally and win you know win more prestigious awards and exhibit in you know some of the best galleries in the UK and beyond mm -hmm. and you know because it, it's um yeah it's just what is it there's we, we've been watching a tv show and there was a quote in this tv show that I really liked um and it was something about like it's really easy 
to see like the value in a diamond when it's kind of in the window at Tiffany's. Yeah. But you've got to like you've got to dig, you know, you've got to dig a little bit to find it. It's so easy to come along and go, ah, oh, yes, this person's exhibited in this place, so they're great. But I think what we do with Made It is to say you're maybe not quite there yet, but there's something here that's really interesting, and okay. to take to kind of pick up on that before. Mm-hmm you know, before anything has really happened and to recognise the strengths. Because, you know, that's kind of what we did with each other, I think, in, in that it's like, oh, that's good. You've not quite got it yet, but you will, mm-hmm. and I know you will. And it's kind of a, a stamp of approval. I see. And, and how how do students apply for this year's one then? Has the applications open yet? When they open? They're not quite open yet, mm. um, but they will be launching this week. Mm. Um, we... This year, because it's our fifth year, we've working. We're working alongside uh, a collective, a graduate collective from Liverpool John Moores, is it? Yeah. Um. So they're called L Squared, okay. uh, and it's nice to kind of reach across the pond of the Mersey, um, to work with someone from Liverpool. Uh, so they are helping us curate and produce mm. again. This, you know, it's another paid opportunity for them. Um, so they can kind of work alongside a collective that's already doing something similar. Um, but it also, because they've only just graduated, it's that kind of passing of the baton. I see. You know, it's been so many years since we've graduated now that things have changed. We had that whole, you know, wobbly period in the middle where everyone worked from home. We're not going to say the name. We're not going to manifest it. <laughs> um, but it, it was one of those where things have changed so much since 2019, since the year that we graduated. Mm. And... It's, I think it's important for us to continue passing it down and learning from the graduates because what we needed when we graduated isn't necessarily what they need. I see. Um, so it's it's learning on both fronts. I've got you. So, look, you're both clearly very passionate about the fine art scene up here and for opportunities in the creative sector um, and ensuring that also local artists, I guess, have the opportunities which they deserve. So, Molly, you're part of the Islington Mill Board. Is that is that a way for you to help grow the scene and find more opportunities for others? Yeah, I mean the work that Islington Mill does um, was very kind of inspiring for us while while we were at uni. I mean, Islington Mill does work um, that is kind of world class, nationally significant, and it's just round the corner from where we studied. It's yeah. really um, we're really fortunate to have a space like that 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 operates in the way that it does um, in a very kind of artist led grassroots way. Um, you know, it's it's kind of what I mean, maybe I'm a bit biased, but <laughs> I think that it, you know, it kind of sets a really good standard ac- across the whole country, not even just in the northwest. And being on the board, I think um, I, the reason that I wanted to be on the board is one to kind of give back a little bit because I feel like Islington Mill and you know the the standard of the, that quality that it brings to this region has been so valuable for us and um they've given us so many opportunities it felt like a way to kind of give back to them a little bit um but also it's a learning experience and you know the to, to learn from an organization like that allows us to kind of implement these ideas further out in a way that they're kind of going through a period at the moment of figuring out their programming and figuring out what's going on kind of within the four walls mm-hmm. of the space um, and kind of growing that community back up. And I guess we were able to take some of those ideas and implement them across the region and also kind of bring our audiences to them as well. So it's kind of um, just a really nice, uh, I'm trying to think of the word. What word am I trying to think of? I don't know. I just keep thinking of handholding. It's just, I can't think of the word. Partnership. It's, um, yeah, it's a really strong and valuable partnership that that we really appreciate having. Do you think that's what the art industry really needs, more partnerships? definitely yeah of course i think like molly said earlier i think it's it's not um we need to work more towards an art kind of sector and an art industry that isn't clawing up at each other yeah to work vertically and it should be working horizontally it should be looking at the people that are around you Mm. building a community um you know we try and say this a lot to students and graduates about you know you you're in a cohort of people that are like-minded and that are all going to be in the same position as you when you graduate so instead of fighting each other for one opportunity it should be work together to create your own opportunities Mm -hmm. i mean we met a graduate last year in carlisle who said something really lovely and it kind of stuck with me and it was one it was um the squeaky wheel is fixed first. So if there is enough of us making enough noise and enough waves, 
then the art industry will change to how we want it to be. Okay. And I think, yeah, it needs to be less individual and more community based. I mean, I think we all say as well, like in a very broad way, we hate this about the art world, but we're the art world. It's me nice. and it's you and it's these guys. And it, do you know what I mean? We're all part of it. And I think we are all responsible for it if we want it to change. Um, so it's just, and I guess Short Supply was just us sort of putting our money where our mouth is a little bit and mm-hmm. doing that work. If you want to see something change, we'll try and change it and try and do something different. It's Yeah, it's about change yeah. from within, as you say. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. So what are the next steps for Short Supply? Because you guys graduated four years ago, which I think might be crazy to hear now. <laughs> but where do you think you're going to be in 2027 with it? 2027. Tired. <laughs> Tired. <laughs> <laughs> no, we love doing short supply. Um, twenty. What year is it now? It's 2023. It's 2023. <laughs> where am I? <laughs> where, where am I? How did I get here? <laughs> What's going on? Um, where will we be? I think um, from from my perspective, what I would like to do with short supply is to build its sustainability in, to kind of get more team members. At the moment, it's just the three of us me and Beck and, and Grace who's our um, project coordinator um, a very good friend that we met in 2020 that <laughs> came along because we were like we can't do this the two of us um, but now I think the three of us are even stretched with with everything that we're trying to achieve so I would hope that it would be bigger and that it would be uh, we want to work with more freelancers and, and we want to create employment opportunities from within short supply mm-hmm. it would be great to hire students to come along we'd love to offer apprenticeships we'd like to have a space and and kind of um, offer students studios and you know I guess to kind of continue that entryway offer in a way that extends beyond just a project based thing into this is part of the foundations of what we do yep. I think that's that's my vision for it that's what I would would hope for it and to kind of work towards being an organization that can change kind of policies in the future and you know that can kind of really rally for this employability stuff in a more kind of structured way so we only have small goals by the sounds of it tiny you know it's barely anything really (laughs) (laughs) I I think it's better better to be bold with your ambitions than think small right Mm -hmm. go big or go home exactly and you guys have done accomplished so much would you say do you feel like you've accomplished so much over the four years since graduating I think we we often don't really give ourselves that time to reflect I think Um, so busy because we're we're you know we're looking forward a lot we're always thinking right what are our next steps where do we go from here this is what we learned last year so how do we move forward into the next year Mm. I think we we don't often give ourselves time to actually sit and think it's been four years what have we done I mean I'm I'm currently going through our website at the moment and trying to um kind of redo our archive and I'll you know I'll go on there and I'll think oh we've done loads since that and now I've got to work out everything else I've got to put on it and Mm. Yeah, I I often forget how much we've actually done since graduating um, because we we sometimes think about like our milestone project. So like Made It, um, Queer Contemporaries, which was three years ago now, Mm. um, uh, an event that I can't say because it's a swear word. Um, Yeah. (laughs) More information on your website, though. Yes, definitely. More information on the website. But yeah, so we think about our milestone projects, but we forget about the smaller ones that are in between. Well, time collapses. um, And I think that's... Oh, that's deep. Yeah, real deep. (laughs) (laughs) Well, we know, guys, time isn't real. You know what? No, you know what I mean by that, though. I think I'm not going to go into the science of it, but, you know, you're... Each year that you kind of get older, your perception of time changes. Um, Like, you know, I I remember... I have no concept of time anymore now when I'm 26. Yeah, Beck has absolutely no concept of time. On the way here, she was like, this, that and the other, and we're going to do this and that. And I'm like, we're arriving in five minutes, so I don't know when (laughs) you think we're going to, like, fit all this in. Um, But, like, I seem to remember when I was a kid watching a film and feeling like a half an hour film lasted forever. And now I watch it back and I'm like wow, my experience of time was so different. Yeah, but also you've, the... got, you've got James Cameron to thank for that, making a two-hour-long <laughs> Blue People film. <laughs> What's that got to do with it? Three, three hours, three hours plus. That's just ridiculous. I mean, there was Lord of the Rings back in the day with the extended yeah. editions, so I think every generation has its very long film, which mm-hmm. is very popular. Sure. Mm-hmm. 
But anyway, anyway not yeah. not to go on a wild, <laughs> not to go on too wild of a tangent there. But um, yeah, and I think it's the same. Like as you know, as the sort of years go on with with stuff that we do with short supply and stuff that we do professionally, I think the goalposts change. So you know, it's trying to make those make that space to reflect is really important because um, you do forget things, and you know, you do start to think oh yeah I did that thing it doesn't matter sorry I'm hitting your mic there (laughs) um you know I did that thing and at the time that thing felt like a big deal and it should still feel like a big deal like the first made it felt like a big deal for us and now we look back and go that (laughs) that old thing that old thing (laughs) we can wipe the floor with that but you know it, it is it is important to to make that space and I would suggest that for any student because I know we speak to a lot of students and they're like I haven't done anything and I'm like yes you have you have done stuff you're just not making that space to you know remember it and to give yourself that credit so yeah I don't know if that answered your question (laughs) I think I forgot (laughs) my question my original question but this was a lovely discussion I think (laughs) I've enjoyed it um, now for the recommendation. So for this episode and all episodes going forward, we're going to try something new and ask the pair of you for your Salford recommendations. So I gave them to you before we start recording mm-hmm. and you've had some time to mull over them. So I'm going to come to you individually then. So first of all, where's your favourite place to eat in Salford? Do you want to go first? I really like eating over at Salford Keys uh, in like Media City. Yeah. Um, I really like watching the trams go past. Mm. I like the boop boop that they make. Um, I like to sit by the water. Mm. Um, we were there the other week. I mean, I like eating in Wagamamas. I love a gyoza. But I like just going to the co-op or a corner shop, mm-hmm. getting a sandwich and then sitting by the water and just watching the ripples. It's That's really lovely. nice there. Yeah. Wholesome. I- I'm going to say Chung's. Has anyone been Chung's Chippy? If you haven't, Chung's you should. Yeah. yeah. I wish they'd get a card reader. Chung's Chippy is the don. It's the best chippy. For those that don't know, where would I find Chung's Chippy? Chung's Chippy. Um, oh, it's across the road from the Sol- from Salford Royal. Yeah, the Salford Royal Apartments. Okay. Um, opposite yeah. the Pint Pot. Chapel Street. Yeah. That's yeah, the yeah, one. Yeah. That's it. Chapel. That's the word I was looking for. <laughs> yeah. It's it's. It's, it's amazing. It's, it's just the best. It's just a great solid yeah. chippy, and it's so cheap. I don't know if you've been in a chippy recently, but they are hiking them prices up. Mm-mm. I'm not paying fa- five pounds for chips. Definitely. Are you kidding me? Definitely, I, I, I actually can attest to that. My local chippy, I think it's nine pounds for fish and chips. That's Come dirty. That, yeah, yeah. It's Come it's, it's cost of living crisis, people. Mm. I mean. Everyone's been impacted. Go, <laughs> go to Chung's. No messing. That's a lovely recommendation. Uh, favorite bar? Favorite Doesn't necessarily bar. need to be in Salford. Can be in Manchester as well. So yeah. Um, but it depends because if it's like a night out having a dance, the White Hotel okay. is great. But if it's like sitting, just having a mole, just want to chit chat with your yeah, mates, yeah, yeah. Pint Pot, the Old Faithful. Old Pint Pot. Come on. I mean, I don't. Faithful. I don't personally have a favourite because I'm the driver out of the two of us. I see. Um, so a lemonade out of a squirty tap is the same anywhere. Um, <laughs> but the view from the pint pot is lovely. You like so the view. I, yeah. I like the view from the pint pot. I mean, a pint of lemonade is a pint of lemonade. It's nothing to write home about, really. Um, but I do like the waterfront and the the walk down to the pint pot is nice. There you go. Is there a place in Salford which the two of you know? And it's your space that no one really knows about. This is a hard one. I know, I know. I'm sorry. I like it though. It's making the old grey matter move. Because <laughs> as a student, right? Th- this is my perspective. As a student, when you come here, there is going to be a space that will be your space on campus. A space where if you need to have a think, if you need to have a walk, if you need to just kind of, I don't know, find a nice little corner of campus that's yours, that you go to when you need to have a certain, whether it's studying or just a certain thing to yourself, or just, a, as you say, Like down a main in character City, moment. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Where's our main character moment? I, well, I mean, it's, it's somewhere that all students will know, especially if you live over in Bramall um, or Peel Park, but the, the Peel Park Park. The actual park. The yeah, actual yeah. park. Uh, I mean, when we were in uni... Wait, 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 wait. Is Peel Park a park? Oh, who knows? Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, the japes. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, when we were going coming back into to uni, I remember it was absolutely beautiful when I was going to pick up my student card. And then from that point, throughout the entire time we were at uni, 
it was just a mess. Like they were they were digging stuff up, they were redoing it, they were mm-hmm. making you know, doing the the occasional fixings and you got squashed by a fence at one point. That was funny. Yeah, one time a fence fell on me in Peel Park. Yeah, that it was, was that was, was great. Like, it um, was windy and awful and I just went, ah, and Beck turned around and was like, what's up with you? And I'm being crushed by this fence. Yeah. True story. But I do like Bringing the park. it back. Sorry. Yeah, so, so Peel Park then, yeah. Yeah, sitting by the um, sitting by the canal, there's some benches that face the canal. I like trying to... I know to, the space, yeah. The I canal's like, great, yeah. Yeah, I like playing I Spy with the various bits of metal that are poking out of it. <laughs> I love the, the, the Salford Canal. <laughs> <laughs> Molly? First to spot the trolley gets an ice cream. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Um, oh, where's your place? Where's my place? Um, oh, I hate. I was going to say the exact same one as you. Now what, I have what to about, be a bit creative. What about the ice cream van that used to come to campus? Don't know if it still does. Yeah, there was a great ice cream van that used to come to campus again. Very cheap, very good. Um, I don't know. I kind of. I when I think of like spaces that um, are that for me, I always think of spaces adjacent to the art spaces yeah like outside of paradise works okay there's Mm. now that lovely kind of community garden it wasn't there at the time when we were graduating but like that walk again along the canal by where paradise works is on the way to white hotel on the way to white hotel (laughs) um that spot's beautiful i love it there we were there the other day and i was like oh i miss being here Bonnie um, likes it there too, our dog. Yeah, our dog loves it there. But yeah, I think, again, by the canal, but sort of near um, to where Paradise Works, Paradise Works is an, an artist-led space um, and a gallery space and studios in Salford. And yeah, that area is just great. Mm. That's a lovely answer. And for the last question then today, what thing should every Salford student do before they leave? Study. <laughs> <Yes>. Preferably. <laughs> oh, God, I nearly swore then. Is there like a rite of passage? Anything? I'm not cool enough to do rites of passage, so I don't know if there's one of those. What um, does, well, does the ice cream van still rock up? Oh, no, you're asking. Does me the ice cream van still yeah, come? Yeah, yes, yeah. yes. People behind the glass say they are. Ice cream van, double cone, both colours of sherbet, mm. both kinds of sauce, flake in each. It's going to kill you. All the bells and whistles. <laughs> it's going to kill you, yeah. It's. <laughs> It's. Do you know what? I, at the time, it wasn't that. Maybe it's expensive now. I don't know. But that, that on a summer's day, Ooh. divine, mm. divine. Okay, so for you, it's <laughs> an amazing ice cream, which I now want. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Rebecca, for you, I think every student should realise that you can get delivery ordered to the buildings. <laughs> We used to get Wagamamas ordered to outside the New Adelphi on Deliveroo. Um, and you should offer it to your tutors because they will love you forever. Hmm. Is that what you've done in the past? Then? Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. how to make it in the art world. Yeah. Wagamamas. If you buy them Wagamamas. Yeah. Yeah. I used to yeah. Uh, I used to just go to our tutor's office, knock on the window and go, Wagamamas. <laughs> and you'd go, yes. <laughs> That is actually a real hot take. That's yeah, juicy. That you, the, the, that. The, the New Adelphi building is recognised on Deliveroo. And you just have to go to the little roundabout. So then you can pick up your Wagamamas and an ice cream. You're welcome. But yes, study. Definitely <laughs> study. You know, I love, I love all those answers. That was absolutely fab. Thank you so much for coming down. <laughs> it was a it's, pleasure. It's, oh, it's been a pleasure for me too. <laughs> no, I've really, really enjoyed it, guys. Um, all the best. So um, just quickly then, where can people find Short Supply? Um, you can find us on all of the social media platforms at Short Supply MCR. You can find us on our website at www.shortsupply.org. Um, and, I don't know, are we on LinkedIn or something? I don't know. Yeah, same, Short Supply uh, Short CIC. Supply, CIC. On LinkedIn. Fab. <laughs> and that brings an end to today's episode. So if you've liked what you've heard, and I'm sure most of you who've got to this point will have liked what you've heard, <laughs> um, then do subscribe and hear more future episodes of me chatting to our very lovely alumni. So until then, goodbye. Goodbye.